So when we let, had left off, Henry had gone to the pet store and he had purchased <clears throat> a fish bowl with a snail in it and um, two guppies. And he had paid for it uh, with the money he had gotten from his grandfather. Uh, but because he had the fish bowl in his hands, he couldn't carry the package of meat for the dog. And he let Ribsy carry that. And when we left off, Ribsy had stopped and taken the paper off and started eating the meat. And that was supposed to be a few days worth of food. Ribsy gobbled part of the meat and then trotted ahead with the rest of it in his mouth. Just as Henry was almost close enough to reach for the meat, Ribsy put on a burst of speed. Ribs! Ribsy! You come here! But the dog ignored Henry. Ah, oh, I'll get you for this. Henry was really angry now. He set his package of guppies on the sidewalk and ran after his dog. This time, Henry caught up with him. Henry grabbed one end of the meat and pulled. Ribsy. Growling deep in his throat, hung on to the other end and pulled. The dog had a better grip on the meat because he could sink his teeth into it. Henry found that the raw meat was cold and slippery. Ribsy, you let go of that meat. Arr! Ribsy growled more fiercely. He sounded like he meant it. The harder Henry pulled, Arr! Arr! the louder Ribsy growled. Henry was sure Ribsy wouldn't really bite him. But just the same, he knew it was not a good idea to annoy any animal when it was eating. Anyway, he couldn't stand there all afternoon playing tug-of-war with a piece of raw meat. His guppies might get cold. Oh, all right, you old dog. Go ahead and eat it. See if I care. But that means you get canned dog food the rest of the week. No more fresh meat for you. He went back to pick up his guppies while Ribsy wolfed the rest of the meat licked his chops, and then, with his stomach bulging, followed slowly at Henry's heels the rest of the way home. When they reached Henry's house on Clickatat Street, Henry opened the door and yelled, Hey, Mom, come see what I bought with the silver dollar Grandpa gave me. Oh... Henry, I'm afraid to look, answered his mother from the kitchen. What is it this time? Fish. Fish? Mrs. Huggins sounded surprised. Did you want me to cook fish for dinner? Henry carried his package into the kitchen. No, Mom, you don't understand. Not dead fish. Live fish swimming around in a bowl of water. They're called guppies. Guppies, Henry? Yeah, just two little fish. I'll keep them on my dresser in my bedroom, and they won't be any trouble at all. They were on sale at the pet shop. They were a bargain. See, Mom? And he gently lifted the fishbowl out of the bag. Mrs. Huggins put down the potato she was peeling. <gasps> Why, Henry, what pretty little fish. I thought you'd like them. Henry was pleased. His mother bent closer to the fishbowl. But Henry, what are those dark little things in the water? What little dark things? Henry looked down. <gasps> Why, they're baby fish, Mrs. Huggins exclaimed. There must be 15 or 20. <gasps> baby guppies? Henry was delighted. Look, Mom, did you ever see such teeny-weeny little fish? Golly, they're so little, just about all you can see are their eyes and tails. <sighs> Mrs. Huggins sighed. Henry, I'm afraid they won't be teeny-weeny little fish very long. They'll grow and grow, and then what are you going to do with them? I don't know. I'll ask Dad. Henry was worried. Maybe he knows about baby guppies. But when Mr. Huggins came home from work, Henry was disappointed to learn 
that his father knew nothing about little guppies. Why don't you get a book about guppies from the library, suggested Dad. Mrs. Huggins said there'd be time before dinner, so Henry got, found his library card, and he and Ribsy ran all the way to the public library. Hello, Henry, said the lady in the boys and girls section of the library. Have you come for another book about Ginats and Orgis? This was a joke between the library and Henry. When Henry had first started reading fairy tales by himself, he returned a book and asked for another about Ginats and Orgis. He felt a little silly about it now, although he, secretly he thought Ginats and Orgis sounded better than giants and ogres. No, thank you. I want a book about guppies, Henry answered. I have some baby guppies, and I don't know how to take care of them. The librarian found a book on hobbies. Oh, I have to pause and let my dog in. She's barking. My dog, Keela, uh, just came right up to the door and gave a gentle little bark telling me that it was starting to sprinkle rain outside and she wanted to come in. But back to Henry. The librarian found a book on hobbies that had a chapter on fish, but it didn't tell much about guppies. Just a minute, Henry, she said. Maybe there's something in the grown-up's room. She returned with a thick book about tropical fish. It was full of colored pictures. I'm sure this will help you, she said. But I'm afraid it's too hard for you to read. I'll let you take it on your card if you think your mom and dad will help you with it. Oh, sure, thanks. My dad will help me with it. The librarian stamped the book on his card, and Henry, proud to have a book from the grown-up section of the library stamped on his card, ran home with the book and Ribsy. After dinner, Mr. Huggins sat down to read the fish book while Henry went to his room to watch his guppies. This time, he counted 38 babies. After a while, his dad came in with the book in his hand. It was a mighty interesting book, Henry, but you're going to need some more fish bowls. According to this book, you can't keep so many fish in one bowl. But Dad, where am I going to get more bowls? Maybe we can find something in the basement. So Henry and his father rummaged through the basement until they found a gallon jar Mrs. Huggins used for making pickles. This should do, said Mr. Huggins. They carried it upstairs and washed it. Mr. Huggins filled it with hot water and carried it into Henry's room. Now, when the water cools down some, we can move some of the little guppies. They can't live in cold water right out of the faucet. They need water that is stood or hot water that is cooled. While it's cooling, we can make a net. He found a piece of wire and bent it into a circle. Mrs. Huggins took an old stocking and sewed it to the wire to make a little fish net. Henry and his dad took turns, catching the tiny fish with the net and moving them to the pickle jar. Henry was surprised that such tiny, small fish could swim so fast. The next day, and every day after that, Henry looked at his guppies the first thing in the morning. When he came home from school, he looked at his guppies before he went into the kitchen for a snack. His fish grew and grew. As the weeks passed, the big guppies had more little guppies. The little guppies grew up to be big guppies and had little guppies of their own. Henry had hundreds of guppies. He couldn't find any more pickle jars, so he started using his mother's quart fruit jars. He couldn't keep many fish in a quart of water. 
Henry had jars on his dresser. He had them on his table by his bed. He put jars on the floor all around the edges of his room. When he had one row of jars all the way around the room, he started another row. Goodness, Henry, his mom said. Pretty soon you won't be able to walk in here. If you keep all your guppies, said his father, by the end of the year you'll have over a million guppies in your bedroom. Golly, said Henry, a million fish in my room. Wouldn't that be something to tell the kids at school? Henry was glad when summer vacation started. It now took him so long to feed his fish, he didn't have time to play with the other kids on Clickitat Street. He spent all of his allowance money on fish food, snails, and plants for his jars. He slept with his windows closed if he thought the night were going to be cold. He wasn't going to have his fish getting sick if he could help it. All day long, the boys and girls in the neighborhood rang the doorbell and asked to see Henry's fish. Finally, his mother said, Henry, this can't go on. You must get rid of some of those fish. You'll have to give them to your friends. And that, my friends, is where we will stop for today. Hope you enjoyed the story. Hope you are having a great day. Maybe you can draw a picture of a, what you think a guppy fish looks like or what you think Ribsy looks like. Miss you guys. Have a great day.